Hello and welcome back for new lesson. Today we are going to deal with Eureka, reading and writing, part two. Eureka, reading and writing, part two. As you remember that we have already done part one of the same unit. And if you remember as well, in the last part of uh, our lesson, uh, last time, we have seen a video about a famous and a great uh, scientist and inventor who is uh, Professor Belkassem Habba, who is an Algerian uh, scientist. Today, we are going to see a text about the same famous Algerian uh, scientist and uh, inventor, who is uh, Belkassem Habba. So, uh, as you can see here, the question is, read the text, read the text carefully, and then answer the following questions. So you have to read the text carefully and then answer the following questions. So I'm going to read for you the text once and if you need more, so you just click on pause and then you can read it carefully. At that time you can be uh, able, you, or you will be able to answer these questions. Let's see here. Professor Baqasem Habba is one of the most successful Algerian researchers in the field of electronics around the globe. He was born in 1957 in Al-Wad. He joined the university, the university of Science and Technology in Algiers, where he completed a DES, which is Diploma of Higher Education in Physics. Then he got a scholarship. Then he got a scholarship to the USA, University of Stanford, where he obtained his PhD. He joined IBM's research labs in New York, working on the application of lasers to microelectronics. Then, Mr. Uh, or Professor Belkassem Habba went to Japan. After six years there, he came back to the US. He joined Tesla, a small company with a small capital, whose aim was to miniaturize the mobile phones. However, it needed a lot of financial support. He also worked on the miniaturization or the miniaturization of cameras and on the design of the console games, which is PlayStation 2 and 3. Professor Habba is classified as one of the top 100 researchers in the world. Now, if you need more uh, time to read the text, you just need to click on pause. You read the text carefully. And now let's see uh, the questions. And then you can answer them. Task one, say if the following sentences or statements are true or false. Say. The following, uh, if the following statements are true or false, according to the text you have just read, all right? Uh, let's get started with the first, uh, with the first statement. Professor Balqasem Habba has a diploma of higher education in maths. Professor Balqasem Habba has a, a diploma of higher education in maths. The second one, the aim of the company Tesla was to make the phones bigger. So the aim of the company Tesla was to make the phones bigger. So remember, you have to read the text again and tell me if it's true or false. Number three, it was very expensive. It was very expensive to design phones in small size. It was very expensive to design phones in small size. And the last one, Professor Balqasem Habba was the designer of PlayStation 2 and 3. Professor Balqasem Habba was the designer of PlayStation 2 and 3. All right, so let's correct. The first one, Professor Balqasem Habba has a diploma of higher education in maths. That's false. And we said that he have it in physics, all right? Number two, the aim of the company Tesla was to make the phones bigger. And we said, if you remember in the text, 
the aim was to make them smaller, not bigger. So it is false. It was very expensive to design phones in small size. So the answer here is true. So it takes them like uh, too much, it needs like too much money to make them smaller. And the last one, Professor Balqasem Habba was the designer of PlayStation 2 and 3, and that's uh, true. Okay, now we move to the next slide with another task. Now we are having task two, all right, so task two. Read the text again. So you are going to read the text again to have more uh, details and then answer the following questions. So where are the questions? So these are the questions, as you can see here. These are the questions. And this is uh, the text, so the same text. It's the same text you have already read, all right? So I read for you the question or the questions and then the same way, you just click on pause you read the text carefully, and uh, after that, you can answer the questions. The first question is, why did Professor Balqasem Habba go to the United States of America? What was the reason? Why did uh, Professor Balqasem Habba go to the United States of America? So you have to tell me the reason from the text. The question number two, or B, how many years did the professor spend in Japan. How many years did the Professor Balqasem Habba spend in Japan? Was it three years? Four years? Five years? All right. Question number three, what was the objective of Tesla company? So Tesla company has like an aim, has an objective. All right. So what was the objective of this company? Question number four, Professor Balqasem Habba has become a worldwide famous scientist. Our Algerian uh, famous scientist has become a worldwide, it means a very famous scientist in all over the world. So, do you want to be like him? All right, so as Mr. Uh, Professor Belkasem Habba, as he became or he has become a famous Algerian scientist in the worldwide, do you want to be like him? Uh, if so, what would you do? All right. Now, uh, after reading the text, now we will check the answers, if you have a correct answers or not. Now, these are the answers that we have taken from the text you have already read. All right, so these are the answers we have taken from the text you have already read. Concerning the first question, uh, the question was, why did Professor Balqasem Habba go to the United States of America? And the answer is, so Professor Balqasem Habba went to America because he got a scholarship. He got a scholarship to further his studies. So to carry on his studies in the American universities. Question number two, how many years did the Professor Balqasem Habba, of course, spend in Japan? Was it three years? Four years, five years, actually he spent six years. He spent six years, all right, in Japan. Now the following question, what was the objective of Tesla company? What was the objective? According to the text, so the objective of Tesla company was, was to make the phones smaller. So the objective of that company, Tesla company, is to make the phones smaller, all right? And the last one, Professor Balqasem Habba has become a worldwide famous Algerian scientist. Do you want to be like him? Of course, I think all of you are inspired now and want to be like such a great Algerian inventor. So as a possible answer, we can, uh, we can get here, yes. I would, but by working hard. Yes, you can be, like nothing is impossible. So you can be like him, but you have to work hard, all right? Now we move to another task. Now we move to post reading. Post reading. Task number one, I explained to you, uh, or I explained for you the, the, the question. Reorder the following sentences according to the plan in the box below. So, we have sentences, as you can see, we have sentence A, 
sentence B, sentence C, and sentence D, you're going to reorder them, so to classify them. How? According to the, uh, this box you can see here. So you have to get, you have to check first where is the problem from these sentences. So you have to tell me where is the problem, so you put it first. Then you look for the initial solution from these sentences again. And after we have problems raised by the initial solution, problems raised by the initial solution, again from uh, these uh, sentences, and finally the invention. All right, so I repeat, you have sentences from A to D. They are not in the correct order. You have to order them according to the box you can see here. So you have to mention first uh, the problem, and then we need uh, initial solution. After the initial solution, we need a problem raised by the initial solution, and finally, the invention. Don't forget, you have to click pause, take your time, and try to do the task, all right? Take your time, try to do the task, and after now, we, we're gonna see the, uh, the correct answer. All right. And now, let's see the correction of uh, the task I have given you. Uh, so, the problem is here, we can see the human voice doesn't allow people to communicate over very long distances. So, this is here the problem. And then, uh, the solution is so, in the old days, men used drums and other means to communicate. However, so, the problem raised by the initial solution is it took people a lot of time to send and receive messages. All right? And now let's see the final solution. In 1876, Graham Bell solved the problem by inventing the telephone. So this is the correction of the task I asked you to do. It means about, it was about reordering uh, the sentences. All right? Now, let's see here. You can see or we can notice that the, we have however, and however is uh, mentioned with a different color, which is the red color, all right? What I'd like you to do, I'd like you to read the text again, or the short, this, the, this short paragraph again, and try to tell me what is the function or what does the word however in this sentence express. You have to read the text again, and you have to tell me what does the word however express in this short paragraph. All right, now let's try to, to get the answer. However expresses, however expresses. Conditional, cause or concession. Conditional, cause or concession. Try to guess. Conditional, cause, concession. It actually expresses the concession, all right? Concession, which means uh, opposition. And we're gonna see more examples to make it clear for you, all right? Just take it easy. We're gonna see more examples uh, to help you understand the word however, the use of the word however. Now, uh, I have got for you another example. Uh, television is an easy and cheap source of entertainment. Television is an easy and cheap source of entertainment. It means you have fun while watching uh, or when watching uh, television. TV, again, can also contribute to sleep difficulties and lower grades. TV, again, television, can also contribute to sleep difficulties. It means you will have problems if you want to sleep at night. And lower grades, and lower your grades. For example, if you used to take 16, 17, and 18, once you start watching or you become addicted to watching TV a lot, so here your grade will be lower, all right? So we can see here two different independent uh, sentences, all right? We see the second, the next slide to give you more details about. The same example, television is an easy and cheap source of entertainment. We notice that the first sentence is uh, taken as an advantage because we can have fun, we can enjoy and spend like a uh, good time like uh, while uh, watching TV. But in the second sentence, TV can also contribute. We have kind of opposition here. 
So we can have fun, but something like, it's kind of an opposition here, like concession here. TV also contributes to sleep difficulties. I told you that we're going to have some problems in sleeping. And lower your grades. So you may take like bad marks if you become addicted to watching television. And this second sentence is taken as disadvantage, which is drawback, all right? So, uh, as you can see again, advantage for the first sentence and disadvantage for the second sentence. Now, my, my question to you is to join. What do I mean by join? Is to combine or to connect, all right? You're going to join, combine, if you want to say, or connect uh, these pairs of sentences which ones? I'm talking about these, so they are mentioned again here. So you mentioned these or the following pairs of sentences, the first one, second one, with the connector, however. You have to connect them using what? Using the connector, however. All right? As you can see here, television is an easy and cheap source of entertainment. However, great. However, here we can see concession. All right, so you can see something positive and then something negative. So it is good, yes, that's true, but, okay, we can replace by but, but, or however, it can also contribute to sleep difficulties and lower grades. Uh, yes, now we see uh, in the same, uh, we're gonna see another question. Can you substitute, I mean, can you change all right, with the same connector, however, can you change or substitute the word or the connector, however, by other connectors expressing concession? So the same uh, aim. If you want to express concession differently, what can you use? Could you think about this? Can you think about what other conjunctions or what other connectors we can use instead of, however, to have the same function, to have the same, uh, like, uh, objective or the same, uh, yeah, like uh, concession. Let's see an example here. You can call someone anywhere on the, on the planet. So you can call someone anywhere in the planet, wherever he is that someone, that person. However, all right, so this is the concession now. So we can call someone wherever he is. However, you have to pay, you have to pay for every minute you spend on the call. You can see, like the phone is good. Yes, yeah, so you can call him wherever he is. But, however, you have to pay for every minute you spend on the call. So we can notice the concession here. But my question to you, try to use another, concession, another uh, connector which expresses the concession. Let's try again. Let's see if you get the right answer or not. You can call someone anywhere on the planet. You can say, however, or... You can also say, nevertheless. You can say, however, or nevertheless. Nevertheless, you have to pay for every minute you spend on the call. This is the end of my video. I'd like you to think of other connectors like uh, however and nevertheless, which have the same uh, meaning or function as however and nevertheless. All right? So see you in the next class.